afterwards. Um, I just want, before letting you guys loose for the next couple of hours, I just want to show you the last thing. Because one of the cool things that I discovered yesterday that we could do is I suddenly discovered how to make what's called equirectangular grids. It's basically a coordinate system where the coordinates are distorted in 360 degrees. So this is a panoramic um, wireframe basically. But the great thing here is we have some lines and every time that line is sort of bent, it actually means that it is straight with it, uh, within a VR environment. So that enables me to begin to actually make hand-drawn sketches on top of stuff like this. Here I've made sort of the uh, lobby of an evil corp. So this is basically from Mr. Robot, the TV series. Um, so this is a lobby. And we kind of really see it here. But when I jump in and put just this flat piece of footage inside of Adobe Premiere, again, I've just taken the picture with my smartphone, put the picture in like it was, like I sketch it on paper here. But then when I toggle the VR view, I suddenly get something that actually looks a little like that I'm in a three-dimensional space here. This begins to get us the possibility to jump shoot all the rest of it and say, okay, what if we just sketch some stuff on paper? And I've printed the 25 copies of this, so you can actually just begin to make some experiments with this. Because suddenly we begin to get rather close to some of the stuff you will be doing with Danva in the next workshop, where you will do this kind of prototyping with graphical elements from inside the headset. But now we can actually prepare for this outside of the headset. And the great thing here is this doesn't just extend to hand-drawn stuff. You can also, I've also made, there is a graphic like this one in the uh, folder where I sort of show. You can begin to place elements on top of this. So you know everything that is in this area will be in front of you. Everything here will be when you look to the right. These two elements will be to the back. Everything happening up here is at the top or the bottom. So when we can do that, we can begin to, um, for example, draw things. We know, okay, this is our field of view from in, within a headset. So every time we change something, we have to sort of change it inside sort of these rectangular grids here. And then we can begin to draw stuff like this. Uh, this was another drawing that I tried to make here. I tried to show you this in Premiere 2. So I think it's this one. No, this is actually, you can see here I've just dragged in the the guideline to sort of say, okay, you could drag this down to your video layer one and then just begin to place elements on top of it. So you have this as a layer you can just delete in the end when you're finished placing your objects. But I do believe, yeah, we have this one here too. Oops. What did I do there? I don't know what I did. Oh, like that. You see again here, just some hand-drawn things. I'm trying to make a, make a lecture hall here, making a lecture. But I, when I see it here, sort of get the sense. You can see I made some drawing mistakes here. But again, it's really, really fast iteration with this stuff, especially if we just use regular Sharpies and try to draw it on paper and then scan it in. But it also extends to that you can do this in I have an example here that uh, Andre V made. Now we're not in sketching mode. Now this is actually a piece of art that you can just import into Premiere and have it as an art space in and on itself. So you can actually go directly from if you're good enough at sketching to do something that looks rather nice. But you can also, here I have shown it with some Photoshop elements. If I import graphics that I've made in Photoshop and use the transform tool in Photoshop, then I can just make sure that the lines of my transformation actually follows the lines in my grid here. And then what I've made now will actually look like that when I put it in to Adobe Premiere. So we can easily 
go to something that actually looks rather nice and actually looks nearly as we have made something in 3D and made all the effort of uh, doing the stuff. If we went a little further, this is uh, just inputting a ba background, photo of a whale, and then some interface elements that I was speaking about. But you, we can begin to orient ourselves in this. So with a little effort, we can really begin to move fast. This was interface elements made in a couple of minutes in Photoshop, and in, it took five minutes to arrange it all inside Premiere. And then we could begin to actually look around. We could arrange it in scenes, sort of saying, okay, now we move into what happened if I had pressed this localization of the whale, for example. And this last example is one I can show you in Premiere. I have added an entire folder in your assets here. There's an entire folder called an entire folder called Equirectangular Images. And here I've added some, here's some stuff from a World War II museum. Here's some generic sort of a white space room, some abstract graphics, my own hand-drawn stuff, and a scene from a computer game or from an art gallery. This is actually just footage taken by, uh, from my iPhone that I've just put in in this way. And you can take whatever of these images you want. Let's say we want this image of a sort of computer-like. You can see here now we actually are placed. And if, you, if it seems a bit distorted, that's probably because you have to right-click on it and scale it to frame size. It might be bigger or it might be smaller than the frame. So always remember to check if it's scaled to frame size. And now when I'm placed myself in here, we could essentially duplicate a lot of the stuff that we just did in the other sketch. We could take this um, simulated Vive controller and we could put it on top of this background layer. Something like that. And again, just remove the, the green screen here. And then, oh, need to click this off. And I can begin to position this as something close to, to being meaningful here inside our VR sphere here. I can see now we can actually look around and you can see here okay his arm is cut off oh my god he's, he's just a floating arm what to do? What they do mostly when they do VR video is they use a little trick that remember that we saw here that everything that happens in the bottom is actually the entire bottom. So if I make an entire square block down here, it will actually become a circle because it's all wrapped around in sort of a circular uh, dome here. So if I jump in here and take this view and just go up to make a legacy title as we did before, but now instead of drawing a crosshair, I just draw maybe, um, maybe just a square, um, Maybe I'll just draw a black square, actually. Something like this. Draw a black square. Make sure that it covers my arm. And now if I drag this title, was it this one? I can't even remember what it's called now, the one I made. Where did it go? Never mind. Make a new one. Title 2, okay, black, black square, please, like that, title 2. And if I drag this on top of my footage now, you can see now the computer soon burns up. So now I actually have just a black angle down here, and you can actually see this one had to be scaled a wee bit more, like that. But now look, when I look down, I'm inside a circle. 
and we could write stuff here so we would have sort of a logo of a company forming down there too. So again, just remember to sort of wrap your mind around that and maybe use this guiding material. It's inside the, um, the assets folder. You have this one, the grid guide. Have this one in front of you to sort of consider where I am, am I placing the stuff. And if I write stuff, then of course, if I write something, I need to distort that to follow some of these lines. If not, it will be distorted completely within the scope of this. Um, this is um, one of, <laughs> again, as I told you, I discovered that we could do this yesterday evening. I just became so excited. So I think really this is, this is where we can really begin to make some fast sketches and make them work inside the uh, whatever cases you're doing. So I hope that you will try to explore some of this too. And the last thing is that if you want to make stuff like graphical overlays and stuff like that in this kind of environment, you have to use the last effect that I'll introduce to you guys is whenever I import, let's say I have here in our assets folder, we have one called sci-fi screens. And it's just a really nice screen filled with retro interface graphics. But let's say I wanted to uh, show a concept where I am in this futuristic place and I want to place this graphic so it looks like it's over here instead of one of the windows. Then of course I could just drag the sci-fi screen, I could drag it over here to, and we might be inclined to say, okay, I just need then to reposition it. I just need to select the clip and do all the stuff we did before, resizing it, uh, repositioning. But you can see what happens is it becomes curved. And it becomes curved because it, of course, doesn't follow these equi-rectangular lines. And that would have been, had been a pain for us to actually solve this problem. Had it not been for that Adobe has made, if you write VR, they have an effect down in the effects panel called plane to sphere. And what that effect essentially does is it translates all the mathematics of how to distort a two-dimensional piece of graphic to fit a three-dimensional plane here. So it actually makes it into a spherical element. So you can see now I drag it over here and then suddenly it begins to format much more closely to what we would expect. Not completely perfect, but you can begin to um, distort some of these this stuff so you can see we can actually reach something that more or less looks looks right here so by adjusting the scale here and adjusting the scale to which it adjusts its plane you can actually make something look rather nice and then of course if I wanted to to actually place it in the window to make it look completely like I wanted to you will probably remember that in the sketching tutorial, there was this effect called a corner pin that we also applied to sort of distort the perspective of graphics. You can always just write for it up here, corner pins. And when I apply that one, the sci-fi screen, corner pins, whoop, let's see, maybe we need to zoom out a bit again. And when I then select the corner pins down here, if I select it down here instead, then I actually get the opportunity to drag the perspective of each corner of this graphic. And now you can see it actually warns me that my graphic card is, uh, is overwhelmed. But then I can actually sort of try outside of the VR mode. I have to deselect that one. But I can actually try to make it fit. And of course I can zoom in a bit if I want to. But again, you can see right now, we're doing stuff that I told you you shouldn't do. We're clearly out of sketching mode. Now we're just making it look nice. But again, just to fit, get it perspective right, something like that. Close enough. Now, 
when inside our little scene here we actually have my hand here and you can see over here we have an interface of a graphical element I imported and it actually looks like it belongs here more or less right you could do that with your data visualizations your two-dimensional graphics use this plane to sphere effect to and then corner pins to direct the sort of perspective and you could do it on top of stuff you have green screen here or you can do as I have made an example of over here you don't have to um, import the graphics here but here I have a layer of the previous World War II image I just dragged the same image inside and over here I added saying okay what if uh, suddenly I had the opportunity to through the same dashboard here say I want to see what the evil Nazis did under World War II and since I have no humor at all I rapidly stop motion animated some sad people being lit on fire and but that's all taking place in our new three-dimensional grid here so again we can mix and match modalities effects and by just applying it in this equi rectangular remote we can really begin to apply some stuff so yep Yeah, you could uh, easily, actually this, uh, the graphic here is just a video from uh, YouTube, a free uh, interface animation from YouTube I downloaded. Yeah. So it might as well have been, let's say, footage you have captured or uh, the news you've recorded or something like that. Um, or it could be other green screen footage. It could as well have been uh, the, my colleague Vash from the video you green screen in the guiding tutorials. You might as well put him inside there mm -hmm. so you could put green screen persons inside of the scene too. Mm 